Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from How On Beat, and today we're checking out Debunking Araki Forgot Extras, number one. Now, I'm not 100% sure, I mean, I'll find out after I've watched this, won't I, if I'm going to get spoilt for part seven or onwards. I have now, as you all know, I'm up to date with part six, checked a load of things out about part six, done the um, Debunking Araki Forgot part six. If there are bits in this that spoil stuff, past six, then my fault, but I'm not going to check out any others because I reckon there will be spoilers for um, parts I've not seen. Uh, but yeah, I, I really love the Ham on Beat videos, I love JoJo's content, and uh, we're just going to get straight into this. Like I said, my fault, <laughs> it's all on me if I get spoiled anything um, that I've not seen already. But I do love these whole debunking Iraqi Forgot videos, so it's nice to get back into this one, and this is probably going to be the last one for a while, I'll check out. Yeah. Really good videos. I went through the first seven parts, along with some additional videos covering certain large topics of the series. They're good as well. In fact, I still need to watch how does King Crimson work, so I could check that out as well, I suppose. Or that have only started to be discussed more recently, which are too small to get their own video. And Death and Joker's actually as well. I want to cover are ones that I already went over. Maybe that will be more, actually. Which apparently not thorough enough. Due to the nature of the series, making the video results in people commenting. Damn, that's a, a lot. that's a lot of comments. I did that's predict this, comments. however, and tried my best to survey the waters a bit by asking the audience ahead of time for topics. Mm -hmm. But there are still some that ended up slipping through the cracks. So today I'll be covering the Iraqi Forgot topics that I missed along the way. Okay. One of the biggest ones I've seen recently, and possibly the most Ooh. insane Iraqi Forgot topic I've ever seen, goes as follows. In one of my videos, I happened to mention the fact that the baby saved on board the boat at the end of Lisa Concord Lisa. is Lisa Lisa. Yeah. Anyone with even a basic understanding of the story would know this, yes. since Lisa it's Lisa stated. directly explains this in part two. Mm -hmm. However, in the comments of that video, I received a ton of comments saying, but if Lisa Lisa was the baby, and she's the mother of Joseph, then that would mean Joseph and all of his descendants aren't actually related to Jonathan and therefore shouldn't have Geostar birthmarks. This has to be one of the most insane things What about the, ever the guy that we didn't actually see but we got the story of? These people somehow seem to forget the existence of George Joestar II, whose backstory was there we extensively go. shown in part two, and is one of the most integral characters to the backstories of Joseph and Lisa Lisa. Yeah. And the fact that Arina was already pregnant mm. with him at the end of part one, which couldn't have been made any clearer by the narration from the end of that part. Just as confusing as when I get comments that think they're correcting me, telling me that the baby was actually George II, and presume they think that Lisa Lisa was actually Arena's baby? What? Once again, this was directly conflicted with by what was clearly stated in part two. How an amount of misinformation like this can even be possible so bad. says a lot about the reading level that some JoJo fans possess. Uh. I've received some questions regarding the sand copy of Dio that Iggy made in Part 3. All right. In my Part 3 video, I said that Iggy based his sand copy off of the photo of Dio. I received comments asking how Iggy was able to replicate the pants when the photo was only from the waist up. Now this doesn't exactly make sense, since not only are the pants visible They're in the spirit photograph of Dio, yeah. but if you look at the manga, you can see that the pants Dio was wearing as a sand copy is different from the pants he was wearing earlier, huh. so they were never replicated perfectly in the first place. Others have even asked me how Iggy was able to replicate Dio's face, but as you can clearly see, Iggy did not replicate Dio's face, oh, and it is obscured with shadow. Wow. The end of part three famously shows Jotaro using his stand to stop time, mm -hmm. since it is the same kind of stand so as our dog. Many people are confused by this, asking, how is this possible? I've been over this topic before, but I think it's worth Let's going do it further again. in depth. Star Platinum and the world are far from the only similar stands out there. Hermit Purple is nearly identical to the stand of Jonathan's body, which Dio used. The Darby brothers both have nearly identical functions. That's stands, true, yes. With the younger Darby having an additional mind reading ability. The rats in part four both had identical stands, and in part seven, the Boom Boom family had three stands. Oh, with no the idea. Oh, okay, we got part Jotaro seven stuff. Oh, Dio oh had come a on. Stand due to their psychic link through Jonathan's body. However, some people 
chose to say their own explanation as to why the stains were similar, citing an example from earlier in the part. I've gotten a lot of comments saying that when Jotaro drew the tarot cards to name his stand in the beginning, he first drew the world card, mm -hmm. Aldo said it was already taken, and then he drew the star card. Now, I was confused as to how I got so many comments saying the same very specific scenario, since no such scene exists in part 3 or any of its adaptations. Oh dear. I finally ended up tracking this down to a YouTube video which does this edit as a joke. Not only does the description of the video clearly state that it's an edit, and it's but awful. the edit within the video is incredibly obvious. The video jumps to a shot of Dio from dozens of episodes later. It has Aftal comically saying, oh shit, in a completely different font. But somehow, Jojo fans are dense enough to watch this and literally think it's a scene from the no. show. Although it probably shouldn't come as a surprise that a lot of self-identified <laughs> Jojo me. fans out there probably only watch the show through clips on YouTube. The most embarrassing Just watch thing the show. <laughs> is that it watch the show. The anti-forgetting side of the argument. They're just spreading around stuff that's completely wrong. Nah. I prefer people said nothing rather than muddy the waters like this, even if they're on my side. Another big topic comes from the end of part three, when Holly is cured of her disease. Okay. People often ask why defeating Dio caused her stand to disappear, and not the stands of the other Joe stars. In reality though, Holly's stand didn't just cease to exist. It just stopped rather, affecting her. To a dormant state. Yeah. When Dio used the stand arrow on Jonathan's body, it sent out a kind of distress signal to the other Joe stars through their psychic link. This caused stands to start to awaken in Jonathan's descendants. The stands didn't just appear right away, however. They gradually started forming over the course like of even the year. For Jotaro, he started to notice the of his stand, guy? but didn't fully gain control of it until the fight in the police station. Mm -hmm. For Holly, her stand was dormant for a while before fully appearing. At the beginning of the part, she is clearly already a stand user, since she is able to see Star Platinum. However, her stand is not fully formed. Makes sense, yeah. Eventually, she can see it. <laughs> before she was ready, since it was reacting to the signal from Jonathan. Jotaro was strong enough to use the stand once it appeared, so he had no issues. But this same effect on Holly caused her to fall ill. Yeah. After Dio was beaten and the distress signal ended, her stand had no need to be out anymore. Returned to how it was at the dormant of the part. state. Josuke was also affected uh, by the yeah. same disease yeah. as Holly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he later was able to use the stand perfectly fine. We don't know exactly when Josuke's yeah. was used. <laughs> I'm stupid and I know these things. <laughs> like, I am really stupid. Like, so many people point out how wrong I am at times. Yep. As a young child, his stand was dormant but still usable. It didn't fully awaken until he was 15, shortly before part 5. Jotaro and Joseph were already able to use their stands, so they remained as they were. Holly's stand didn't disappear, it just returned to what she was capable of using yeah. at that time. Stands completely disappearing was never part of the equation. One weird string of comments I've got came from my part 4 differences video. In it, I point out the new addition of the other Morio stand users hidden in a crowd shot. These were Okuyasu, Keicho, Yukiko, Hazamada, and Rohan. For some reason, however, I got at least 30 comments saying they spotted Polnareff in the crowd. Despite the fact that it's clearly Keicho, in that they're watching a video which is telling them that the people in the crowd are future stand users from Part 4, and that all of the other people there are clearly from Part 4, and the fact that Polnareff isn't even in Part 4, yeah. and it would make no sense for him to be foreshadowed there. Another common topic in wow. Part 4 involves the Nijimura brother's father. Keicho Nijimura was searching for a stand user to kill his father out of pity. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a ton of questions asking me why Okuyasu didn't just kill him instead. With his stand in the hand, which can erase matter, Killing the father would presumably be an easy job. First of all, Okuyasu has never shown a desire to kill his father. And second, Okuyasu himself has said that he has no idea where things erased by the hand go, go to. For all he knows, yeah. the things he erases may just be appearing in another dimension, where the father would just regenerate 
and continue just suffering. Carry on. Others asked yeah. why Joseph's Haman wasn't used to kill the father. Since he was mutated by the flesh bud and combined with Dio cells, some think that Haman may be capable of killing him. First of all, I think it was made clear that that aspect of Dio's vampiric cells was eliminated when it combined with the father's. Plus, Since he walks in he's got a bit of a thing issue. going on in his so head, anyway, with his old age. The 
Christmas much earlier than Trish was, since she was sitting out in the open, as opposed to being hidden like the gang was. I've seen others ask why the characters didn't open the fridge to stay cold. These people don't seem to know how a fridge works. A fridge doesn't just pump out cold air. No, you, you can't just open a fridge and it make your room cold. What? The That's dark. Open, it would be cold for a little bit, but, since the but then the fridge is going to heat up. No longer able to remove the heat. What? Yeah. Since it's just sitting there running electricity. God. I also got a comment asking why they didn't put the others inside the fridge, despite the fridge being downright tiny. Also in part five, the stand talking head took control of Narancia, causing him to unintentionally tell nothing but lies to the other characters. Some ask why Narancia didn't just say the opposite of what he meant, so that what he said would be different. This is not how the stand works. Talking head doesn't reverse what you say, it makes you lie. Lying on purpose is still lying. Yeah, it would so let you say it. If lied, it would still come out as a lie. Yeah. Another fight in part five involved the characters entering the mirror world, yeah. so stand, man in the mirror. According to Aluso, the only living things that can enter the mirror world have to be brought in by the stand itself. Some people have said this is wrong, since we see the crows on the ground after they were affected by Fuku's virus. These people somehow didn't understand that these crows were clearly said to be dead from the virus, which is the reason they appeared. The second they stopped living, they were no longer considered living, so they appear in the mirror world. Near the end of part 5, Polnareff tells the group about his experience with the arrow, and through flashback we see it on the wall in his house where he was in hiding. Some people were confused by this, and asked how the Beetle Arrow, which in Part 6 Dio was shown to have owned previously, mm -hmm. ended up in this random house to be found by Palmareff. I have no idea how anyone could think something this ridiculous, when Palmareff clearly states that he found this arrow in Egypt, mm -hmm. and brought it with him to Italy. Another one from Part 5. In my Part 5 Differences video, I mentioned how the anime <laughs> this was is scene of Koichi using Echo's Act 1 to look for Jorno. I got a lot of comments asking how it's possible for him to suddenly use a previous act. However, this has never been a problem for Koichi, since using previous acts of a stand is completely normal. He is shown using Act 1 after he had already gotten Act 2 multiple times in Part 4, such as during the Red Hot Chili Pepper fight and in the Ghost Alleyway. The only other stand to have acts is Tusk in Part 7, and Johnny is shown to be using previous acts all the time. Okay. In Part 6, Jotaro sends Jolene a fragment of a stand arrow inside of a pendant in order to awaken her stand in the prison. Yeah. The pendant also includes a transmitter intended to be used in Jolene's rescue. There seems to be some confusion when it comes to this pendant, with some people claiming it was never seen again after a certain point, and that the plot point surrounding it was dropped. This is blatantly untrue, and the path the pendant took is actually quite clear. It started with Jolene receiving the yeah. pendant in the visitation room. After she was used by the arrow inside, water. she threw it into the drain. Yeah. Later, we are shown that Aramis found the pendant, yeah. and was also pierced by the arrow. This is who we saw carrying it at the end of the third chapter. Then, uh, she sold it to Wes. Yeah, it was very clear that it got carried on and people that stands from it. Like, Wes gave the pendant I mean, I watched the anime, and I'm... Why Emporio had the Joestar birthmark? Obviously, 
obviously this comment is completely ridiculous, since no such thing ever happened yeah, in the story of part six. Doesn't. I believe the comment may have been referring to weather getting the birthmark. And since I already ended up explaining Which is a, that a, video, a link with the comment in the Pucci. intro segment. Yeah. However, this somehow caused multiple commenters to come out who did believe in Porio had a birthmark. What? I'm absolutely dumbfounded as to how this is even possible. It's like they gaslighted themselves into believing that this actually happened, and then started to make explanations for it in the comments. This must say something about how JoJo fans retain information. So weird. Like with that previous YouTube clip I spoke about, it shows the extent to which some people's understanding of JoJo comes from what people say about it online, or from random YouTube clips, rather than what it should come from. Which is really the source the material. Yeah, let's just watch the that. The topic I've seen across all parts has related to stands interacting with physical objects. Many people point to examples of stands being affected by non-stand attacks and say this is contradictory. I'd like to finally just lay this entire topic to rest. Stands exist on a spectrum of tangibility. Stands have been shown to lose their opacity to enter a ghost-like state and phase in and out of objects. Yep. At other times, however, a stand needs to attack, and so they become more solid. Let's say a stand wants to break through a wall. If the stand is strong, like Stunt Platinum for instance, its punch would destroy the wall. Right. But let's consider a stand that's too weak to break through. Obviously, since the wall is tougher, the stand would be stopped by the wall, at least when it's in its solid form. Now, let's look at this process in reverse. If an object is flying towards a stand user, and they use the stand to defend themselves, they obviously would not be making their stand intangible. They'd want to make their stand as solid as they can yes, to block the Yes, to game. actually so deflect it and throw it away, yeah. It's a physical object, it gets damaged. These interactions can take place in the opposite direction as well. So yes, stands can be damaged by physical objects, but only if they are taking their solid form. Some people are also confused when it comes to the visibility of stands. I've gotten tons of comments asking about scenarios such as Anne and the Sailor seeing strength despite it being a stand. Others say that since Love Deluxe is a stand, people shouldn't be able to see Yukiko's hair. This comes from a clear misunderstanding of stand categories. The traditional idea of a stand is a ghostly type, something like Star Platinum, which appears and disappears at will. These types of stands cannot be seen by non-stand users. Mm -hmm. However, plenty of other stands are a completely different type, which are bound to stands. These are stands which are bound to a physical object. The sword's a good example. Anubis. Including non-stand users. Strength and Wheel of Fortune were both shown to be bound to a physical boat and car, respectively. Yeah. Anubis is bound to a sword. Yeah. Toph is bound to a book. Superfly is bound to a transmission. Look, yeah, the, the whole area, you can't go anywhere. A huge number of stands that either exist within physical objects or are made up of physical matter. I have no idea how anyone could still be confused when non stand users see them. There's literally so many of these stands that it would take way too long to list them out in this video. In part 7, there's been some confusion involving hot pants stand mm. from Starter. Starter takes the form of a spray bottle which can spray flesh. Okay. She also has the ability to absorb flesh to refill the spray. People have claimed that she was only shown absorbing flesh at the beginning of the part, and that later on, this restriction was removed. In my part 7 video, I showed that this is not the case, since she can be seen absorbing flesh even in the final arc. However, some were not satisfied by this. And now they claim that she needs not to pay attention to this little bit of stand. I have no idea how anyone could think something like this, which is so obviously not true. Apparently, they think her stand ability is literally a one way transfer of flesh from one source to another with no time in between. Something like that almost reminds me of one of the Aphex twins' abilities in Part 8. This is simply not how Cream Starter works. Even back in her very first appearance, oh, we're still she was shown spraying flesh without having been shown absorbing it. Cream Starter obviously stores the flesh inside of it for when it needs to be used. If she's low on flesh, she absorbs some more. If she already has flesh stored, why 
would she be absorbing it? It's like if these people saw a scene where Mista was out of ammo and right, had to go. reload his gun to shoot. And then, in a later completely unrelated scene when he already has ammo, he shoots his gun. These people would then say, wait, what happened to Mista needing to reload his gun every time he shoots? When he clearly just got more ammo off screen and had yeah. his gun already fully loaded. This same basic concept obviously... You don't need to see every single little action that's going on. In which Hot Pants is shown using her spray, she obviously already has ammo stored up. Still in part 7, here's a topic I apparently didn't give enough of a detailed explanation to. When the alternate universe Diego uses the world to stop time, you can see that his horse is in a different location after the time stop. People were confused by this and asked me why Diego's horse is capable of moving in stop time. I explained this quite plainly in my part 7 video by saying that during the time stop, Diego moved his frozen horse to a different location to continue riding, much like how Palmeraf was repeatedly moved down the stairs in part 3. Yeah. For some reason, this was not a good enough explanation. That's and I was berated by millions of comments oh, telling me that wow. it was ridiculous to say wow. that Diego would be capable of moving his horse. They say that Dio would be easily capable of something like this with his strength as a vampire, but that it is ridiculous to say that Diego could move the horse since he is a normal human. Oh, okay. These people somehow seem to forget about the fact that Dio has access to the world. One of the physically strongest stands in the series. With a stand of comparable strength being able to bend steel bars with ease. The world would be able to reposition the horse without any issue. And Diego wouldn't even have to move a muscle. And that's without even mentioning that objects within stopped time don't even have weight to begin with. People yeah, anything just stops, freezes. Shown, floating in place in stop Until time, the time is, able to like, reset. Things how all could not understand such a simple concept. However, I've gotten some more comments about this topic, which somehow take the insane approach of saying that Diego's horse actually is able to be ridden in stop time, since Diego is making contact with it. For starters, we see other panels where the horse is clearly frozen in stop time, even with Diego on top of it. Second, this idea is so is that an alternate version of Dio then? Everything we know about oh, the world. I since don't. every other time it has made contact with a frozen being, they have not been conscious. When Dio moved Palmeraf down the stairs, Palmeraf obviously did not become aware of the time stop. He stayed frozen in place. Things are obviously movable by Dio during the time stop, since he can apply force to them and they'll move for a bit before halting. But this has well, what's never the point in controlling time if you can't do anything during it? An object, let alone make a horse fully unfrozen and rideable. And that was every extra Iraqi forgot yeah, I, cool. I could think of. Like that. I doubt if I'll be able to make another video like this with the amount of questions that are probably left, but you never know. I don't plan on making a full part 8 debunking video until the story is actually over. Cool. But I have already gone over my thoughts on part 8. So that's part 8 stuff, okay. Video. I also may cover some of the larger topics. I might the check out the King Crimson like video and Death in JoJo's. Heaven and the Death and Revival yeah, 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 I might check those two out. If you have an idea for a video similar to those, leave it in the comments below. Hopefully I managed to clear up the remaining I, I don't know, you've got a few other extras. Awesome. So, uh, it pointed out a couple of things in part 7, but that wasn't very spoilery at all, so I'm fine. But I think I'm going to not bother with the um, uh, rest of the extras video. But yeah, I'll probably check out the um, full explanation on King Crimson, because that is a very complicated stand. Uh, unless I haven't checked it before, I'm going to have to double check that. Um, oh, done so many videos. <laughs> and then the, um, oh, what was the other one? There was another one anyway. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, brain is 
I'm gonna have to take a break from doing these videos at some point. I've literally, I think I haven't gone a single day without uploading for the last, uh, God, I think I've done like two and a bit months straight. Uh, some days with two videos. <laughs> so, um, anyway, thanks to my patrons. If you want to be named at the end of every video we upload, links in the description of the Patreon page. Uh, $1 a month is all I have so special channels. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Let me know that I should watch because of future videos. I'll see you guys, all you guys next time.